Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am finally, finally showing you guys how I do my tags for my scrunchies, for my bell bottoms, and for my embroidered t-shirts or any kids t-shirts that I create. So in this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I do my tags. Um, I use PicMonkey, I use Cricut Design Space, and I also use Canva to create my tags. I'm still trying to figure out and perfect my technique for tag making, so this isn't going to be like the best tutorial, and I'm not really good with voiceovers, so if the voiceover sucks, I am so sorry, but um, this is basically what I'm doing currently for my tags. Um, I probably will change things up eventually, but as of right now, this is what this is what is working for me currently. So um, let's go ahead and let's get into how I make my tags on Cricut Design Space and on Canva. Okay, guys. So first, I'm gonna be going to pick Monkey to um, do my design for the tags. Now I already have my tags designed, but I thought I would just go ahead and show you guys how I would do it. I basically picked uh, two and a half by three and a half inch design. Um, and I'm using Pick Monkey because uh, the font that they have on here is what I use for my logo. So I do all my editing for my tags and anything for my business. Uh, logo wise, I do it through Pick Monkey just because I have my font uh, on Pick Monkey. So right here, I'm just basically designing my tag. I have my business logo. I have my website. These are my care tags for my bell bottoms and my t-shirts. Um, so on these tags, I like to put my logo, my website, care instructions, and a spot to put a batch number as well. So for my care instructions, they're pretty basic. I just do machine wash cold, uh, no bleach, no fabric softener, um, hang to dry. Um, you can even use symbols. So typically I use symbols for my tags, um, but for this, I'm just typing it out for you guys. But you can find care symbols off Etsy that you can download or you can find them on Google for free. Um, but for this demonstration, I just typed them out for you guys. Um, right here, I'm just adding a center point. Um, this is where I would fold my tag in half. So this kind of just helps me line up everything. Um, and I want to make sure that I leave some space at the top um, for a seam allowance. So when I sew them in, you'll still be able to see my logo and it won't be covered. Um, so basically, I like to add a center point. And then I also like to take that same line and add it to the very top and to the bottom. This just helps me know where to, where my tag starts and where my tag ends, so when cutting them out, all my tags are the same size, basically. And I have enough room for a seam allowance for sewing. For my batch number, I just like to flip it upside down because when you fold the tag in half, I want it to go the same direction, basically. So I just leave the whole back side of the tag for the batch number, and I just hand write the batch number out. And if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about regarding batch numbers, I have a whole video on that and I'll make sure and leave that video linked up above for you guys or in the description for you guys to check out so you guys know exactly what to put for batch numbers. And now for this, um, for my tags, you want to make sure and state where, if you're making like handmade clothing for kids, you want to make sure and state where the item is made. I forgot to put made in the US with domestic imported materials. So just make sure that if you are making tags for kids' clothing, you want to make sure and state where exactly the clothes are being made. Now I'm just downloading them as a PNG file, and basically I can upload this file to Cricut Design Space. I like using Cricut Design Space because it has all my measurements, so when designing the tags, I know exactly how big the tags are. Right now, um, I am making my tags one and a half inches, a little less than one and a half inches because the ribbon that I use is one and a half inches and I want to make sure that I have a little bit, a little bit of space. I don't want the tag to go over um, or the image to go over on the tag. So I try and make my tag just a slightly, slightly, a little bit tinier than the actual ribbon. 
So right now I'm just copying and pasting um, the design um, with Cricut Design Space, the only downfall to using Cricut Design Space is you're not allowed to use the whole full 8.5 by 11 sheet. I believe you only can go up to 6 and 3 quarters by 9 and a quarter inches. So that's a downfall to using Cricut Design Space. But I do like using Cricut Design Space because it has the grid and the measurements for you. So it kind of makes things easier when designing the tags and making them the right size that you need. So here I also like to make sure and leave a little bit of space in between each tag because um, I'm going to be cutting each tag out so I want to make sure that I have enough space in between because I don't want to take away any of that seam allowance um, when sewing the tag in. I want to make sure that I keep that space. So I just try and leave a tiny, tiny gap for me in between so I can have room for cutting. I'm trying to use, utilize as much of the space as I can. So as you can see, I am flipping the design to the side because I want to try and use up as much space as I can. And later on in this video, I am going to show you how to use Canva. And with Canva, you're able to use the entire eight and a half by 11 size of your sheet. Or if you use a bigger sheet for sublimation, you can use a bigger sheet. But for this demonstration, I'm just showing you guys how to do it on Cricut Design Space. So I also want to try and use as much of the space as I can, so I'm going to go and find my logo and I'm going to upload that to um, Cricut Design Space and I'm just going to shrink it down because I'm going to use it for a smaller tag as well. Uh, I accidentally did it as a half an inch, it was supposed to be one inch, um, so I made it accidentally too tiny. But um, I'm just showing you as a demonstration too, if you're trying to make the tag directly on Cricut Design Space, I like to use the little shape feature and adjust the shape to the size of the tag. Um, as you can see here, I'm making the tag a half inch when it should have been a full inch. But um, I like to kind of use this little rectangular shape as like my sample size for a tag so I know exactly how big to make the logo. And this one is for my scrunchie, so basically all I have is just my logo on the tag. I don't have any care instructions or anything like that. I just like to keep it very simple um, so I just have my business logo on these tags. And as you can see here, I'm adding that little line again um, as my bottom portion of the tag and the top portion of the tag so I know exactly where the tag starts and where the tag ends. So when cutting it out, I make sure I cut it out to the exact size. And then for this tag, I don't add a center point um, just because the tag is so tiny. Um, I don't really need the center point. Um, I kind of just use uh, the measurements within like the rectangle to kind of help me out and figure out where the center point is and kind of um, figure, figure out where to place the logo based on the center point of the tag, I guess. And to kind of help keep the image in centered and keep every, everything aligned, I like to use the arrange option on Cricut Design Space and just kind of center it. Sorry about that, that was Doja yawning. Okay, so now again, I'm just trying to use up as much of the space as I can. So I'm just gonna duplicate this little tag and try and use up this, as much space as I can. Okay, so I wanted to make sure and attach everything so when I print it out, everything's all in the same spot. So make sure that you press attach. Now when printing this out, you wanna make sure that you mirror your image. Um, you do this on Cricut Design Space and whatever other um, software that you're using. You wanna make sure that your image is mirrored. So when printing out your sublimation design, you always wanna make sure that it's mirrored. 
So I'm sending it to the printer um, with Cricut Design Space. I like to use um, the system dialog. So that'll open it up and I'll be able to adjust the printer settings um, to exactly what I need. Right now I'm just selecting the printer that I'm going to be using and I'm going to go to preferences. Now for preferences I like to make sure that I have the right type of paper. I just use the basic print uh, photo paper mat I believe it's called. Uh, yes, the mat type of paper. So I select mat and then for this, this is really important, I like to use the gray black scale because when I was using the colored option my tags were coming out green but once I selected the black gray or black and white option um, I had no issues with the, my tags turning out green they were black exactly the color that I needed them to be um, so I just sent that to the printer now this is how I did my scrunchie tags on Canva now I already had my tag designed on PicMonkey um, so I did all that designing over there, just like I said before, because I have my font on PicMonkey and they don't have that font anywhere else. So I do all my designing for my tags on PicMonkey and now I'm using Canva because with Canva, they also have the measurements as well. Um, so you can adjust how big you want the tag to be. So it tells you exactly like it's a one inch by one inch. Um, so that kind of helps you be accurate with making your tags. Now you can do this on Photoshop, um, some other editing software, but for me I found Canva and Cricut Design Space to be the easiest, but with Canva you're able to use the entire space. Um, so right now I'm just lining up each row and I'm just selecting um, the option to the left. Um, so it just lines up everything. So when I print it out, um, I can, can cut just one long strip and use that long strip to heat press it onto the ribbon. So I wanna make sure that they're all straight and aligned so they don't come out all crooked. Now I'm sure there's easier ways to do this. I'm sure there's different methods, um, but basically this is how I do it and this is easiest for me. So now that I have it all designed, I can just press download. Um, I can save this as a PNG and then I can always have this file. So whenever I need to make new tags, I have it saved and ready to go. I don't have to go back and remake it. I could just have it saved and just pull it up. You also want to make sure that you select grayscale or black. Um, if you are making your tags of color, then you wouldn't you wouldn't pick that option, obviously. But because my tags are just black, um, I do that option. But if your tag has color, if your design has color, obviously you want to keep the color on there. Um, on here, I did forget to mirror it, but before you print it out, just make sure that you click mirror um, on the design. Okay, now that we're all done with that portion, the tags are all printed out. Um, I have my heat press set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna be heat pressing my tags for 60 seconds. So again, I have my heat press set to 400 degrees and I'm gonna be heat pressing them for 60 seconds. Okay, so for some materials that I'll be using to make these tags, I just have some regular standard butcher paper. You can get this from Sam's Club. I believe I ordered this off of Amazon because I don't have a Sam's Club membership. I'm sure you can also get it from Costco too. So or even Walmart. Um, so I just have a big roll of butcher paper and I do three different sizes for my tags. For today's video, I'm gonna be using one inch um, satin ribbon, it's just basic white. And then for my sizing tags, I'm not gonna do those in this video because I don't, I don't need any size tags yet, but I use sizing tags for my bell bottoms and this ribbon is 3 eighths of an inch and it's again, just satin ribbon. And then for my baby blankets, my t-shirts, my bell bottoms, 
I use um, this ribbon. I get it from La Belle Petite. Um, so I'm going to be using her ribbon today for my for my care labels. So today I'm going to be using this one for my clothes, and this one I like to use for my scrunchies. So. These two I'm going to be using for today, and then I also use um, heat tape. This is Sizer brand. I got this from Michaels. You can get this probably anywhere on Amazon, Joann's, Michaels, probably any craft store. But it's just some heat tape that I'm going to use on the labels while heat pressing it so you don't get like a shadow effect. Um, when heat pressing it so and then I didn't I don't think I mentioned it But I'm also going to be using this brand for my sublimation uh, paper I just use a sub sublimation Paper and I've had no issues with this paper. I actually really like this and so far I've had a lot of good results Okay, so for my sublimation printer. I just have an Epson 2760 eco tank um, This one just prints up to an eight and a half by eleven sheet I really don't use this printer much. I only honestly use it for my tags. Occasionally I'll use it for like a coffee mug. I made some like keychains and I made some kids t-shirts as well, but I haven't really used my I haven't really used my sublimation printer too much. My goal is for this for 2022 is to use this more and utilize it a lot more to help grow my business, but as of right now, I'm just using it for tags. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my scrunchie labels first. So I have my ribbon um, laying down. I have the shiny side up, and then I'm gonna make sure and take my strip and lay it down shiny side with the letters. And I'm just gonna add some of my heat tape to it. I usually just do Either two pieces, sometimes three. Try not to use a lot, um, but you definitely want to use enough to make sure that it doesn't shift around because you want your paper to stay still because you don't want any like shadow or ghosting effects to happen. And then I'm going to go ahead and just trim my label and just do another row, put another piece down. And I can get a bunch of labels done in like one sitting. I don't do this often. I try and just do this all at once so I don't have to make um, labels every day. I try and just batch them out as much as I can. So technically I would use more, but for this video's sake, I'm just gonna do two rows. And now I'm gonna take my one and a half inch piece of ribbon, same thing, I have my shiny side of the ribbon face up, I'm going to lay down my strip, okay, and now I'm going to take my other piece of butch paper, I have one on the bottom, I'm going to lay this over the top, go ahead and close my Heat press down, and again, I'm heat pressing this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and let everything cool off before I try and remove the paper from the ribbon. While this is cooling off, I'm just going to move this aside and get started on some more labels. Now, I don't use a fresh paper each time. I just try and make sure that... Um, whatever part of the paper was touching the ribbon or the sublimation printer, uh, sublimation paper, I try and use that same size so I don't get any ink on my heat press. I really want to get a little like tape dispenser for the sublimation tape or this heat tape just for convenience because this I feel like takes up so much time trying to peel it off. But that's on like my supply list. Um, I also want to get a ribbon cutter, an electric heat ribbon cutter basically. So I've been looking at some on Amazon. I found one that I want to get. Um, so eventually one day I'll purchase that. It's around like, I want to say around like $40. So I'm saving up money to get one of those because it will be able to cut the ribbon to where it won't fray. Currently I have a ton of fraying with uh, the ribbon and I have to use like a lighter to kind of seal the end so it doesn't fray, um, which is super 
time consuming? Well, not time consuming, it's just an extra step that I don't want to do. I'd rather just have one of those ribbon cutters and make my life a lot easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how these came out. So I have my clothing labels. So this is basically has my logo, my website, my care instructions, and um, and then I have a little spot two for my batch number. So basically I would have my tag look like this on one side and then on the other side it has that information. So again, on my front of my tag, I have my logo, website, care instructions, and then on the back I have a spot for my batch number. And then for my scrunchies, I just have them like that. As you can see, they're a little off-centered, but I'm not too worried about it, honestly. Um, let's see if these ones came out better. Oh yeah, these came out perfect. And I like to leave a little space in between, and these little lines kind of help me know where to cut the label so I have enough room for a seam allowance when I sew them in. But I seriously love Making my labels out of ribbon with my sublimation printer, it's just super easy, super quick, and just cost effective too. These are like my ribbons side by side. So these are two different brands. This is the La Belle Petite ribbon, and I honestly kind of like how, I like how hers came out, hers, um, her ribbon. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but this design came out way like more noticeable, darker, than it did on this ribbon. I don't know if you guys can tell or see the difference on how the La Belle Petite ones is way darker than the one I got off Amazon. So I need to check her website and see if she has a smaller or thinner size ribbon so I can use those for my scrunchies. But but my clothing tags, I love, love how they turned out. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some more tags and I'm gonna go sew some scrunchies after this. Now I should probably work on Etsy orders because I have like 16 open orders, but none of them have to go out for like another seven days. Um, so I'm not too stressed about doing Etsy orders right now. I kind of just want to make a bunch of tags and then sit and make some scrunchies. I'm trying my best on the weekends not to work too much, especially since I've been, I've been doing craft fairs. I try and take Sunday off and if I do work on anything it's something that I want to work on and right now I, and honestly right now I just want to work on some scrunchies um, I've been working on my website today too I love love how my website is turning out I'm gonna show you guys in my next like work with me video what my website looks like um, I had some Eric I had Eric do some coding on my website to add like a personalization feature on my website so I'll show you guys my new website, or not my new website, but I'll show you how my website is set up in my next video. But like I said, I'm gonna go make some more tags. Um, I just wanted to make a bunch of these so I don't have to like worry about them at all. I'll just make a bunch so I won't have to make any for quite a bit. But definitely go check out La Belle Petite Boutique. I'll have her website listed down below. Um, she has such cute ribbon. I don't make tutus, but I love using her ribbon to make my tags, and honestly, I prefer her ribbon over the Amazon one, like, the design comes out way more, like, darker and just more prominent, so, um, she also has, like, other types of print of satin ribbon, I think she just sold out, too, of her cow print ribbon, I know she's trying to restock that as quickly as possible for you guys, but definitely go check out her website. She's gonna be adding a bunch more different prints and um, restocking on her cow print because she like sold out like so quickly. So um, definitely go check her website out. Snag some of this ribbon if you guys are in need of some ribbon and wanna do tags for your clothes or tags for your scrunchies, whatever you need tags for. Highly recommend um, her ribbon. It's really honestly my favorite. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know you guys have waited quite a bit. Um, if I make any changes to my method on how I make labels, I'll definitely keep you guys updated. And whenever I get that little device that will cut the ribbon, I'll show you guys that in the video too. I'm saving up my money for it. I think it's like 30 or $40. So hopefully I can get it soon because it'll make cutting the ribbon a lot quicker and a lot nicer and more professional looking. So just keep a lookout for that so I can give you guys a review on whatever device I get. 
But I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!